It's been 18 years since Halo 2 has come out, and to this day, not one player has been able to complete this challenge. Until now? The challenge I issued was perhaps the hardest challenge that currently exists in all of gaming. It is a challenge that has been completed by zero people in 18 years. Most mortals can't complete Halo 2 Lasso no matter what, let alone doing it without taking a single death. And I've looked everywhere online to see if there is any lunatic out there that has successfully done a deathless run of Halo 2 Lasso without envy. I think it can be done. I really do. $20,000 to the first person that can do it. Let's make some history. history. Today on Rocket Sloth, we are going to break down the Halo 2 Deathless Lasso Challenge and explore not only why this challenge is so close to nearly impossible, but also what it takes to complete this challenge. With 13 brutal Halo 2 levels and a $20,000 bounty that is up for grabs, we've seen hundreds of players, quite frankly, not even get close to completing Halo 2. However, at the time of when when we started working on this video, we got to talk with some of the runners who have actually made some progress towards this challenge, which set the stage for us realizing that, yes, this challenge can, in fact, be done. And despite how absolutely brutal the gameplay may be, it just takes one player to overcome the odds. When Halo 2 originally released in 2004, Bungie introduced these hidden collectibles known as Skulls. These Skulls also worked as game modifiers, which would alter the way that the game would be played. In some instances, it could be a benefit or something fun, like the Sputnik Skull displacing the gravity on types of impacts, or even the Envy Skull, which allowed you to go invisible when you played as the Master Chief. There were some other fun Skulls in there too, like Grunt Birthday Party, where in the original Halo 2, headshots would turn into plasma grenade explosions. And there was also the I Would Have Been Your Daddy skull, which changed the rarity of combat dialogue, making rare lines more common. Ah! Uh, let's see. Our colonies are blown to hell, the Covenant have found Earth, and our last best hope is a guy in green metal underoos with serious friendly fire issues. Ah, I'm great! But besides the few fun modifiers, the real challenge came in the form of the rest of the skulls that intended to incrementally increase the difficulty of the game with each addition, and that's where we start with the real challenge. There was the Anger and Assassin's Skull, which made it where the enemies would fire their weapons faster and all of the enemies would be permanently cloaked. The Black Eye Skull made it so that your shields do not charge up unless you killed an enemy with a melee attack. The Blind Skull made it where your entire heads-up display is just gone, pretty much meaning you can't really see your aiming reticle or anything else as far as health is concerned or motion tracker when activated. The Catch Skull and the Envy Skull made it so that enemies would throw more grenades and all weapons dropped would have half as much ammo as normal. Then there was the Ghost and Mythic Skull, which essentially made it where enemies wouldn't flinch when meleeed, and the enemies also would have more health and shielding, making them harder to kill. The Thunderstorm Skull upgraded the ranks of a lot of the enemies, so in instances where you would normally face off against a normal elite, all of a sudden they would be an ultra. You'd run into more jackals that had the better shields, like the orange ones. And lastly, there was the Wapapotamus Skull, also known as the That's Just Wrong Skull, which strengthens the hearing of enemies as well. Then there was also the Iron Skull, which meant that if you died, the entire level would be restarted. Now all the way back before the days of regular YouTube uploads, some Halo players did activate all skulls and put themselves through this intense gauntlet of just even being able to complete the game with all of the skulls activated. Matter of fact, the term lasso, which stands for legendary all skulls on, wasn't even really coined until the Halo Reach era. These types of runs with all of the skulls activated were originally called Halo Mythic runs, or Mythic difficulty amongst the community. And while over the years, the mythic slash lasso difficulty of gameplay would get some recognition by Bungie, unless you wanted some internet bragging rights, you probably didn't run all skulls on back in the day. Once in a while, Halo Reach would have a weekly challenge for completing a level lasso, and that was the first time there was some sort of incentive to complete the game lasso. But when Halo the Master Chief Collection came out in 2014, all of this would 
change. Nowadays, MCC has 700 achievements across it, and two of the most elusive achievements to get are the Back for More achievement, where you have to complete the Halo 2 Lasso playlist, and the Lasso Master achievement, which is for completing the Lasso playlists for Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4. Obviously, pending that you can get the Back for More achievement to even get that one. But this right here is where the inspiration comes from for Moist Critical himself to build the ultimate Halo challenge. You see, when they were building the Halo 2 Lasso playlist for Halo the Master Chief Collection, for whatever reason, 343 Industries opted in removing one of the skulls that serve as a benefit for players, the Envy Skull, the one that gives Master Chief invisibility. For whatever reason, this skull was purposefully removed from the playlist, meaning that for the achievement, players would have to complete Lasso without the added benefit of being able to use that invisibility on the Master Chief levels. This one small change now made Halo 2's Lasso the hardest Halo challenge of all time. Let's put this in perspective. Luke and I, who both run this channel, set out to get every single achievement in the Master Chief Collection before Halo Infinite came out, and we dove ahead first into Halo 2 Lasso's playlist co-op, and while, sure, we're relatively casual Halo players, we spent a lot of time playing the game considering our type of content, and this thing absolutely crushed us. The first level alone took us a total of 17 hours in attempts before we were able to complete it, and that was with us being able to die and revert to the last checkpoint because of the co-op rules. For months, we would slowly chip away at each level, having to do a lot of research on different types of strategies, learn brand new types of glitches, and also deal with the occasional Master Chief Collection crashing, like what happened to us six hours into Gravemind when we finally got the prison skip done completely, and then we got disconnected. Great. So, as you can see, Critical's challenge is definitely not something that can just be picked up and done by any Halo player, at least not without hundreds and hundreds of hours of practice in this specific game type. But while players like us are definitely not qualified to even think about pulling this off, I genuinely know I'm not a good enough Halo player to do it, there are some players who've now spent weeks grinding away at being able to be the first players to ever complete 343's revised Lasso playlist completely deathless. Now let's look at the specifics of Critical's challenge. The bounty started off at $5,000 and was raised to $20,000 for any player who can complete Halo 2 Lasso with the 343 era revised skull set, which essentially means no Envy skull. However, you can choose to play on the original Halo 2 for the Xbox as long as the Envy skull is skipped, or if you're on MCC, you can use the playlist that is already built into the game. The gameplay has to be streamed live, no co-op allowed, glitches are okay, however, third-party hacking devices or modifying game files are not allowed. Now, after a few weeks of the reinvigorated rush to try to be the first player to complete this with the bounty on the line, some players quickly realized that playing on the original Xbox may serve as a better advantage for being able to make progress on this challenge as the original Halo 2 runs at a lower tick rate than the MCC remaster, meaning that in the newer version of the game, enemies shoot even faster than what they originally did with the skull and their awareness is even quicker meaning you have less time to react, and some glitches from the original Halo 2 game no longer work in MCC. Some of the glitches that exist in Halo 2 Classic don't exist in Halo 2 Anniversary, the biggest one being ghosting. In Halo 2 Classic, there's a glitch called ghosting, which allows you to displace your hitbox, and it's crucial in the first level. Using ghosting, the first level is actually pretty doable, it's pretty easy. You can ghost through multiple doors and skip large sections of the map, and that's totally fine. Still, playing on the original Halo 2 Xbox has some downsides, like having to collect the skulls and set up profiles, and the newer MCC version has access to mouse and keyboard support. But as we said, while hundreds of players have attempted this, most of them don't even get past Cairo Station. Like... Damn it. No. <sighs> Gotta kill him. Gotta fuck. 
Oh yeah, that's uh, that's not happening. Now honestly, the grind set just to get past Cairo Station is incredibly hard in itself. And mind you, this is the first level of the Lasso Deathless run, meaning once you do manage to get to the skill level where you can complete this first level, you then have to go on and complete 12 more levels in one sitting without dying. If you do die, you're back to Cairo Station again, and you have to survive that level once more. I think anyone who's attempted this challenge should be incredibly proud of themselves and and should merit some sort of respect from the community just if they were able to complete Cairo Station at any point without dying because that level alone, in my personal opinion, is probably the second hardest level in the entire game, or at least tied for second place with regret. So looking at this challenge, if we look at the large number of players who have attempted this with Cairo Station and reduce that just to the players who have managed to even get past Cairo Station, our number of participants go from the hundreds to a handful of players who have managed to bypass Cairo. And with that, these players still want to continue on with the challenge. Yeah, I drive a ghost in the lake now. Yeah, I spit a bar like I'm Drake now. Put a little candle on a cake now. Uh, no, it's me, it's what I say so. Yeah, I'm playing Halo. Yeah, I'm playing Halo. Ayo, yeah, it's what I say so. Yeah. Now, once getting past Cairo Station with enough knowledge and strategies and careful planning and execution, getting through Outskirts and Metropolis is definitely possible and viable without dying. There's a few things along the way which are terrifying moments, but for the most part, players can progress past these two levels if they can make it through Cairo. However, Arbiter is definitely a different story, as there is a lot going on, and even though you can use your invisibility because you're playing as the Arbiter here, it's only active for five seconds, and the widespread chaos that can happen in this level definitely means that this is another major choking point for many players who are even able to get this far. Now, typically, majority of people who've been trying to go on the grind set, no matter what, to get as far as they can with this challenge, if they do get past Cairo, they have to pretty much put in the same amount of research, planning, and strategizing for Arbiter so that they can find a path to make their way through the level. Okay, so if anyone was to, say, beat this challenge, what type of player would it actually take? It's quickly become clear that this isn't a challenge that just anyone is going to be able to walk into, start learning strategies, and then just take the crown at the very end. If anyone is going to manage to pull this off, it's going to be a Halo player who has been running Halo and doing challenges for a very long time and knows the intricacies of Halo 2, how the enemies work, how the AIs typically react in this setting. After the first couple of weeks of this challenge being live, the people attempting this challenge really dwindled down to three select groups. Group one were players who had just heard of the bounty and they were jumping on for fun to just try and attempt and see how far they could get with Lasso before they died. They'd pop up on stream or they would upload their experience onto YouTube and it was good fun, it was really insightful full for what a regular player typically would experience or even a more experienced player would run into. Then we have group number two, which are the players that are on the grind set, that even though they might not know the ins and outs of Halo 2 as deeply as other players, they're willing to learn and try new things and make progress and chip away at consistently being able to beat Cairo Station. Maybe they move on and start mapping out strategies for other levels. And then there's the few players that we consider in group three, veteran Halo players. Players who already have been playing Halo for half of their life or longer, have gone into challenges and proved successful in the past, but most importantly have the mindset and willpower to grind through the RNG madness and hardships that come with this challenge. We're talking the players who have intimate knowledge of how many bullets it takes to take out a certain type of enemy, how to head glitch in certain scenarios to stop enemies from seeing them and survive a second longer. Players who have a deep understanding of what objects they can randomly punch 
30 to 40 times to get shields back when they're in a situation without shields, and players who have an internal meter in their head that just lets them more or less have a good feel on how much health they have at any given moment despite not having that information on the screen. After realizing that this would be a major turning point for who could possibly be a candidate to pull this challenge off, it does narrow down the profiles of what type of player it would take to be able to complete this impossibly hard challenge. There's only a handful of players out there that have been playing Halo all of this time that are at that level. Let's look at the top contenders. Oh my god, what a kill! Oh, clip that. Silver, also known as Halo Completionist, early on in the challenge toyed around with the idea of possibly doing dedicated runs. Now, Halo Completionist has been a part of the Halo community for a very long time, posting lasso guides over the years on how to complete every single Halo level lasso, and he even went back and did a 2.0 version for Halo 2 Anniversary with even better strategies. On top of that, he has live streamed himself playing all the lasso games many different times, and when we reached out to him in DMs, he did confirm that he has been able to complete every single Halo 2 level more or less lasso as individual runs, but he's never sat down to try to do a playthrough from beginning to end. Early on when the bounty was still started at just $5,000, Halo Completionist did jump on stream and play around with Halo 2 lasso as it had been a little while since he had played lasso and was re-familiarizing himself with the lasso mechanics and getting back into the swing of things. However, he did explain to us that while he was running them, he found himself falling back into older patterns because of his series of making tutorials of trying to find newer routes and optimizations for lasso running rather than just trying to grind out a full deathless run, and said that while a lot of his streams started out as a deathless attempt, they devolved into something else of him just trying to find new strategies along the way, which might not be the best for this specific challenge. Still, no one's doubting the fact that Silver probably has the skill set and knowledge capable of completing this challenge. But the big issue that Silver faces is the time commitment. Halo 2 is a long game to run, and as many of us know, the later levels do pose a huge threat at killing an entire run, which means if Silver were to seriously commit to this challenge, or if anyone was going to seriously commit to the challenge, they're definitely going to have to rely on some very long stretches of gameplay. Also, interestingly enough, Silver does prefer playing on MCC despite the advantages of Halo 2 originally. And while Silver did mention to us that he's pretty busy right now and probably won't be jumping into it, he didn't rule out the possibility of coming back into the challenge later on if the bounty isn't claimed yet. Meaning Silver could end up becoming a dark horse in this race if at the time of this video going out, the bounty isn't already claimed. Pedrogas is another contender who has streamed his attempts already a bit. Estoy vivo. Hola. Yes. Ah. Not only is Pedro Gas a content creator on YouTube, which does kind of mean you do eventually get a little bit of knowledge in the mechanics that go into Halo over years of research, but also Pedro Gas is a former world record holder across multiple Halo titles and individual levels. And while Pedro Gas may not have all of the close knowledge to every single mechanic in Halo 2, his skill set makes up for this in his ability and in endurance in doing long playthrough sessions. Speedrunners spend a ton of time running the same levels over and over again, learning how to adapt and adopt new strategies and routes relatively quickly. Pedrogas, who also opted to play this on the Master Chief Collection, has already made his way to the level Oracle, which is much further than a lot of the players who have been grinding out learning these runs, and we fully expect him to have a run in the future, bypassing the level Oracle as well. And then there's 
there's Mr. Monopoly, a speedrunner from Halo 2 who has been running the game pretty much since the mid-2000s. Not only has Monopoly taken the speedrun world record multiple times, but has been a part of the discovery of brand new tricks, and while for majority of the research of this video, it didn't look like Mr. Monopoly was going to throw his hat in the ring for this bounty, however on the day of recording this, we saw Mr. Monopoly live streaming Halo 2 Lasso on the original Xbox hardware, practicing routes before he is going to start a full deathless attempt. But there is one more player who more than likely has the highest chance at the moment of recording this of pulling this challenge off and may already have completed the challenge based on the timing of this video uploading. We're talking about the Halo 2 player, Jervalen. The general consensus at this point is that Jervalen more than likely is the most eligible player to perhaps pull this challenge off in the soonest amount of time. Not only is Jervalen well versed in Lasso, he does have world records for being the first confirmed player to beat Halo 2 Legendary Deathless. Sorry, Cody Miller. He's been the first person to complete a Halo 2 Anniversary Zero Shot Deathless run, a Halo 2 Classic Zero Shot Deathless run, and in 2021, he completed Halo 2 Classic Lasso Deathless, but with the Envy Skull on. Now, Jervalin prefers the original Xbox hardware and has been hitting the grind absolutely hard ever since the $5,000 bounty was posted. And with his experience with Halo 2, getting through certain levels that a lot of players are struggling with has been much faster for a player like Jervalin. We actually chatted a bit with Jervalin on Discord to kind of get a grasp of where his head is at and how confident he feels going into this challenge, and for a long period of time, Dravalin has been familiar with Halo 2's campaign, and the ins and outs of it, and the way that these mechanics work, meaning a lot of the learning curve that players who are jumping into Lasso for the first time are experiencing are already things that Dravalin knew about a long time ago. While some players are testing new strategies or trying to find new routes to bypass these levels and these challenging parts, Dravalin has already tested the these strategies years ago, and coming up with a pathway to find his way to the end of the game is one that Javalin's already done. It's now just down to a matter of execution. Can I get a back smack? Now, of course, all of Halo 2 Lasso is incredibly challenging, especially without the Envy Skull, but three levels stand out as the biggest choke points many players run into. Firstly, Cairo Station, which Jervalin has been able to clear very easily. Outskirts is a bit easier, as you can jump across the roofs in the early section of the level, and the real challenge is getting a ghost through all of the tunnels, especially the last section. On Metropolis, you want to make sure you don't get clapped by the Envy enemies in the tunnel, outside of the tunnel, or by the enemies in the scarab at the end. On Arbiter, you have this large section when the Phantom is coming in you have to worry about, and then some really tight hallways that can be incredibly frustrating to get through. Oracle, you have a big elevator ride that you're going to probably want to do a mix of head glitching on to bypass. Delta Halo does have a lot of skips if you are able to get out of the early section of the level, as long as you can manage to survive the end area. But then we get to Regret, a level that has a lot of very difficult things that you need to overcome. Normally, Envy Skull is incredibly helpful on Regret as you can jump up on top and shoot at the Jackals. However, without the Envy Skull and the Wapapotamus Skull being on, the enemies can just immediately end you in just a split second. So instead, he has to go and fight some dinosaurs that sometimes the backsmacking doesn't quite work on. In this case, Jervalin, if he can get past that part, uses the basic mission progression, but he does the early gondola setup to skip a bunch of enemies that are in the start. However, there is still the concern that there's a chance that he can load in four jackal snipers and two elites that spawn in the center platform when the gondola is released, and those snipers can just obliterate him before his pre-nade to kill them even goes off. There's some setup you want to do before the boss fight, and then the boss fight itself, you have to do some well-placed timing with some grenades nades and a hijack. Javalin's pointed out that if he can get past Regret in a single run, that's where he feels like the run is really beginning and kicking off. At that point, the run's alive and all 
focus is on the run there. Sacred Icon has some really challenging parts at the final fight. Sometimes you can use your allies to help out, but other times your allies can get flung into one of the holes and you have a hard time finding any weapons to actually use to kill things with. In some cases though, if you stick a flood, the Famine Skull won't affect the enemy because they'll drop their weapon prematurely and you'll get a little bit more ammo there, which is a pretty big deal on a level where you are running out of ammo constantly. However, the weapon drops that are there aren't a guarantee since they're actually random. Quarantine Zone can have some chaos considering the flood are operating UNSC vehicles, but then we get to Gravemind. This level already has a reputation of being one of the hardest levels in all of Halo. Not only do you have a very challenging firefight at the beginning, but there are a lot of narrow hallways, very tough enemies with the brutes, and then just a lot of chance for random things to happen to kill your run in the process. The biggest clencher on this level is the prison section. Now, typically a lot of players who run lasso but are allowed to die go for what is called a prison skip, which is where they bait a brute into the elevator and they do a butterfly jump to raise themselves up the elevator. However, this trick can be very inconsistent and has a lot of RNG associated with it. And when you're doing a run that you've committed four to five hours into already, even with the most amount of setup, the trick is too inconsistent to viably run for this challenge. Matter of fact, Gervalin rather take the odds of having his entire run killed, making his way down into the prison, which still has a very specific path that you have to follow if you want even the chance of surviving this part. While these aren't official numbers, estimates range that the chances with Lasso of getting a perfect prison skip setup from the beginning of the run with things like the Whoopopotamus skull allowing for enemies to have better hearing and Sputnik changing the game physics around is maybe one in a hundred. Just a rough broad estimate. Alternatively, going down the elevator has better odds but not the best odds either. Dravalin estimates that when he goes down the elevator he has to throw a sticky grenade at the brute for even a chance of survival. If his grenade does in fact land and hit the brute, he lives maybe 60 to 70 percent of the time. However, if the grenade misses, which can happen if the brute just randomly moves because it is RNG related, it drops his chances of survival to maybe 20 or 30 percent. Once again, those are just estimates. And yeah, we can pretty much confirm that those sound about right considering when we would try lasso co-op and we tried just going for the prison, we died every single time before we even touched the ground and it's just impossibly difficult to get through this part. If you're playing this game where you can go to checkpoints like in co-op or you can cheese checkpoints like you can in solo, you can sit there and re-roll the prison skip as many times as you need. But when you're five and a half hours into a run and the entire survivability of your run relies on pulling the trick off, banking on something that might have a 50-50 chance of survival does seem a little bit better. Though it can be soul crushing that your odds this late into the game are just around that point. Now, the big thing though is if Trevelyan can survive the elevator, he's very confident that he can have a run that continues on from there and survive the prison itself. It's just a matter of making it through the elevator and touching ground. So far, we've seen two different Gravemind attempts end at the prison. One time, he actually made it touch the ground and was able to clear out all of the prison except for one brute that ended up glitching through a back smack and insta-killing him, and another time where the RNG wasn't in his favor and he died on the elevator. So despite all of this, Dravalin does feel confident that he has the skill set to make it all of the way. He's had the endurance to get that far, further than anyone else has gotten, but it's just a matter of having that lucky run that gives him the chance to continue to fight on past the elevator. If and only if Gravemind can be defeated, there's still three levels left. Uprising surprisingly isn't that bad, and High Charity does have a skip that lets you bypass most of the level. The only thing is the skip itself is very terrifying to do, and Javalins even said that doing the High Charity skip is probably the scariest part of the entire run. Essentially, you have to butterfly jump with a flood and get over to the end section of the level level and 
one wrong move can cause your entire run to fall apart. There is no restart here. There is no second chance and even hundreds of hours of practice, you will still end up being pretty nervous pulling this trick off. Javalin even said in our Discord chat that it's even harder because the enemy is invisible, there's no HUD, and there's the pressure of running this in a five hour long run for it to possibly fall apart. This trick is incredibly challenging and probably a contributing factor to once again why we feel like if someone's gonna pull this off it's someone who has the experience in Halo 2 not someone new stepping in to try to collect the bounty. Jervalin has put a ton of time into practicing it, and even then, it's still scary. The final level of the game is The Great Journey, which is three levels after Gravemind, and this level also poses a major threat that can completely end the run. While typically when you're doing a deathless run, you don't really have to worry about things like checkpoints, because if you die, you don't need to worry about where you're going to revert to the checkpoint. The run is over. However, on this specific level, checkpoints are closely married to loading zones, and there is the risk of having your entire game soft lock if you don't get a certain checkpoint by the Scarab cutscene. The difficult thing here is the way that Halo 2 Classic is programmed is that on this specific level it doesn't want to give you a checkpoint unless your shields are mostly recharged. If you're at the point in this level where your shields are down, with the Black Eye Skull on your shields won't recharge and the game will then stop giving you checkpoints. And for whatever reason the game will still think you're not safe even if you regain shields from bashing enemies. So there is a big potential problem that can come up on the great journey as well. And that right there is what it takes to complete Halo 2 Lasso Deathless. Can you turn around? Thank you. <laughs> I'm annoyed. And I do have to say, whether Gervalin ends up actually winning this or not, the journey it's been watching him live stream this grind has been absolutely unlike anything I've ever seen before. There's so much skill and knowledge in general watching Gervalin play, but the intensity in some moments where he's making his way past points that no other player had gone and knowing that there's some really challenging parts just around the corner that could completely make or break a run. There's this underlying anxiety you feel when you watch these streams in real time wondering if this is going to be the run or is he gonna go this far just to lose it all. There was many times during the grind that Gervalin was on where he made so much progress and it was looking like this could be the final run just to lose it to some random thing that happens in the game. A glitched back smack or an extra wave of drones. But even then, on the losses that Gervalin ran into, the deafening silence right after the end of a run, followed by this somber tone for the following moments of the stream, in a way highlight why this entire challenge is so incredible and interesting to watch. This challenge provided a platform for real-time storytelling in one way or another. Let's settle in. Anyone see a Starbucks? Oh, there's one over there. What the f is going on with this Marine? <laughs> He's going off about Starbucks. <laughs> and whether he actually ends up being the person to take it all or not, every close call and every death and failure and having to restart and do the grind again as a viewer made this entire challenge more exciting more interesting and I just overall really appreciate Gervalin's role in participating in this challenge one way or another because quite frankly it's been a great journey. Can you come here like dude just come here it's okay I'm gonna guide you I'm guiding you to the pro we're going on the great journey right now here's your here's your great journey right here 
you. There's your great journey. This challenge was incredible to see so much hype and excitement and interest in an 18 year old game is something that is really cool and once in a lifetime type thing to get to see. It's been amazing to see new players and old fans of Halo jumping on and playing Halo 2 again, even if they couldn't get past the first level or to see players who have never even streamed before jumping in and going on the absolute grind to just learn lasso bit by bit. That's been really cool to see as well. And then on top of that, we get to, in a way, celebrate some veteran players who have been playing Halo 2 for years and have managed to develop a skill set to just play beyond the expectations of a regular video game player. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss our other videos. We did an in-depth look at a speedrunner known as Cody Miller who ended up getting caught cheating after he attended a live speedrunning event that took hours longer than the expected time. If you're looking for something else cool to watch after watching this far, definitely go check that video out because we put a lot of work into that one too.